Well, hello, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. Just reading my latest Deanne Mills book, Lethal Standoff. <clears throat> Wonderful novelist, friend, and a great read. Speaking of Lethal Standoff, I got an email from my buddy Larry who asked me, hey, we're in the middle of this heated political season. Uh, we've got people who think that um, Kamala Harris is a fascist. Uh, we've got people who think Donald Trump is a fascist. Side note, don't fascists generally want to take um, private industry and nationalize it? And, and candidly, I don't think either candidate's really after nationalizing Exxon, but Maybe there's more to being a fascist or something like that. Um, but the question was asked in the email, uh, you need to address some of this political stuff, please. And I, I thought my first reaction was, eh, that's not really what I do in political thought. I mean, in video thoughts for the day, I'm not trying to, to engender more divisiveness in a nation that's already so divided. I'm trying to, to meld unity uh, and, and find common ground where we can all become bigger and better and brighter lights for, for God. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, maybe I should say something because something is certainly worthy of being said. So here's what I got for you. Uh, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talked about the parable of the talents. And in essence, what he said is, is, uh, there's a master who was leaving and he gave each of his servants a certain set of money to invest and to take care of. And several of the servants invested the money and got a good return. But one of the servants, whether out of laziness, out of fear, or, or out of just stupidity, just took the, the, the money and buried it in the backyard and gave it back to him when he came back. And, and Jesus' response is, that's not the way you should live. Uh, to whom much is given, much is expected. You need to take what you have and use it for good. And if you don't, then what you've got is just going to be given to someone else. And I think that's appropriate as a teaching for the need to vote. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm telling you that there's a need to vote. We uh, uh, who are qualified voters... Um, uh, under the Constitution, we have been given the opportunity to participate in government. And I think it's appropriate to exercise that as good stewards of what God has, has seen that we get entrusted to in this life. So I like that. I like the way Peter said it in 1 Peter 4, that each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others. And I think that, that our vote needs to be a vote for what's best for others. Uh, when Jeremiah was prophesying in the Old Testament, uh, it was a time where Israel was being carted off into Babylon. And, and Jeremiah said uh, to, to seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you'll prosper too. That's Jeremiah 29, 7. So this idea that, that we should vote this idea that we should um, seek the good of our community is really important and that, that we should be prayerful for God to bless us. And then within the framework of that, we've got to figure out how best to vote. And that's a bowl of spaghetti. It's really hard to find where one noodle stops and another starts because I got to be honest with you. There are things that I find encouraging and things that I find deplorable all over the ballots from top to bottom. It, um, it, it makes it a real struggle to figure out how to best vote. But voting and praying about it and seeking the good and prosperity of this planet in which we live is an obligation for all of us. So I've made this your video thought for today.